Hey guys, it's the Penny Pinching Prepper here and welcome to my channel. <clears throat> for those of you who has been around here for a while, give me a thumbs up, would you? And uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, check things out. See if, if you like what you see and uh, consider liking, subscribing and all that wonderful stuff. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you ask me any questions, I'm here to help. Uh... Today we're going to finish up the um, full full grip uh, collapsible uh, ferro rod. Um, so if you didn't watch the video, the, the first video or the second video, I highly recommend you do. But if not, let's just get right into it. Um, so you'll need a, a one inch... Um, sexting screw you'll need a six inch or excuse me five inch ferrocenium rod and what we're going to do to start off is i got my drill down here somewhere is find a metal drill bit now wood one will work but i recommend metal um just that way you're not wasting a bit or having to sharpen it if you don't have a bit sharpener um so you take this and you want to find a drill bit that's the same size and what i found was i believe it was 13 64th yeah 16 34th um that's what it is on mine you might want to double check make sure just bring it up to the end that doesn't have the uh the uh, grooves in it and match it up make sure it's the same size and then put it in your drill Oop. all right and what you're going to want to do is when you get this um it's going to probably should have a hole already if you didn't you went too cheap and i know i'm the penny pinching prepper but get a good for your CRM rod um but uh, I recommend the Bayo lights. I really like them. I think they work great. But the hole is going to be a little bit smaller than this. So we're going to have to drill it out. So you get your drill out. Just go right down through the hole and, and take it slow. Um, in fact, I almost goofed. If you have a multi-speed multi drill, make sure you're on speed one and take it slow. Um, mine's actually already been drilled. But I'm just trying to show you what you do. You just go down through it. Once you push down through it, bring it back on out. <clears throat> um, and then what you're going to want to do is push that through. And it might be really tough the first time. You might have to, you know, hammer it in there and get it in there and... Uh, then what we're going to do is, I know I got it in here somewhere, if I better. Oh, hold on one second, guys. I forgot something. All right, guys. So get a little bit of super glue. And you can use thread lock if you like, but I, I don't see why you'd ever take it off, honestly. Um... Unless you just don't like what you did. But put a little drop down there. And screw her in. Oops. There we go. That way that stays on there. Um, aluminum has a, a way of backing itself off real good real easy so a little bit of super glue or thread lock goes a long way all right now once you get that you can take your measuring tape and measure it out center remember it's you know you're just trying to get it as close as you can to center as you possibly can doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but try to get it 
you know, within a smidgen of it. Hey, I actually did pretty good. So, once it's centered, then put it aside, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Which, the next thing's going to be... It is, it's glue. So the next thing we're gonna do, oh, this is the wrong one. I don't know how so much came out, guys. You know, I thought I had everything ready, hold on. All right, guys, now that I'm all for the, uh, out there let's get back to the video um so full disclaimer i went out and i bought some extra piping here um just for this project and somehow or another i've misplaced it so we're gonna have to do a little bit of pretending for a little bit until we get a little further along in the video all right so let's Let's pretend this is your uh, piece of um, half inch, the, the gray half inch threaded, um, half inch by 18. Uh, the 18 is the, the thickness, how, how thick the wall is. Um, so what we're gonna do is from the threaded side to one end, making sure that without a doubt you have a thread on one side of this you'll measure it out to five and a quarter five and a quarter inches and then mark it and I'm just gonna mark it with nothing because I am totally unprepared for this video thinking I was completely prepared <laughs> little did I know um, so five and a quarter. All right. Lucky for me, there was a little piece of paper there, or the sticker. All right. Now cut it off at five and a quarter uh, with like a hacksaw or um, a miter saw or something like something that has very fine teeth. It's much easier, and you'll get a cleaner cut. I'm gonna cut this and get back to you in a second. All right, guys, now that you got it down to your five and a quarter inches, what you're going to do is take your ferrocium rod, your ferro rod, whatever. And uh, after you've got that good and centered, you're going to drop it down in there, right? And then you're going to take and mark it once again. And... I can't mark it with that this time. I don't even have a marker in here. I did. It's in here. All right. So we're going to mark it on both sides. Or actually, all four sides of the post that's going through the, the, the sexting screw or whatever they're called. Alright, so when you take it out, you should have something that looks like that, alright? So, now I'm going to take a second, and I'm actually going to move this camera. I should have done it already. Give you guys a better view of what I'm doing here. Alright, like I said, a slightly better view, not a great one. <clears throat> So once again, like I said, you should have something like that. Now, back to that same drill bit that we used to go through the, the ferro rod that's the same thickness as the post inside the sexing screw, that, that exact same one. What we're going to do is very carefully at one, one side at a time, all right, 
you're going to get it between those posts and you can actually make sure I'm going in the right direction there all right very carefully start cutting down into that all right now I you can't see me over here so I'm I'm just showing you uh, right in between it now only go down a little bit on each side okay and get back to me in a second just a just a just a smidgen just you know maybe a the width of the the drill bit all right guys oh hey I forgot to tell you guys when you when you go and mark that and you go and drill it oh my goodness I hope you didn't start already um, you want to do it on the threaded side so the side that, that's threaded like this that's the side you want to you mark it and start um, pushing it into and, and getting getting the start so that's going to be on the, the threaded side um, if you've already started a little bit it ain't going to hurt it the, the project will still go just fine without it but um, or with a little screw up but just flip it over and make sure that you do it on the threaded side and then uh, what we're going to do is from this point, instead of on one side, you're actually going to do it on both sides through the middle of it like this. All right. Um, reason being is you want to make sure that those lines always stay matching no matter what. Now try to keep it as straight as possible. It's going to want to it's going to want to force a, a, a twist on you. Um, so try to keep it straight. If it twists a little bit to the side, no big deal. Just try your very, very hardest to keep it straight. Um, and what we're going to do is you're going to count the threads. All right. You're going to go one, two threads up from the bottom. Okay. And that's where you're going to want to stop. You'll want the bottom of the, the bit as it's going down the side to come to that second from the bottom, uh, you know, uh, thread right there. Okay. Don't go past the second one from the bottom. So all the way down to it and we'll get back to you in a moment. All right, guys, when you get all done, you should have something that looks kind of like that right there. And like I said, it, it's hard to keep straight, but do your best. Even I, you know, didn't get that perfect. But what's important is when you're done, you're able to push that down there and it go all the way down and not, not wiggle too much. Just have a little bit of a wiggle to it, all right? That's what's important. And that you did this where there's threads. Like I said, I, I don't have one right now. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I went out and bought it just for this and it disappeared. But so, and there's still two, two lines of thread at the bottom that you didn't drill through. All right. As long as you did that, we're good. All right. Now what we're going to do next is take a half inch drill bit, all right, and I already have mine made up, okay, all right, if you got one long enough, and, and I recommended it in the first video that you get one long enough to, to do this, but um, you'll wrap some uh, duct tape around the drill bit until it's just barely big enough to squeeze in there all right and it's it's got to be able to squeeze through but just barely big enough so it keeps it as centered as possible okay and what you do is put it on your drill bit once you do or you put your drill bit on your drill once you do. And you're actually going to screw the lid on. Okay.
and once it's on there and it doesn't have to be super snug it's just got to be on there like I said not super snug but it's got to be on there we're actually going to drill through this all right guys so just kind of push down pull up push down pull up until you break through all right I'm going to do mine and get back to you in a second all right guys so when you get done you're going to need to clean it out you might have chunks down in there big ones even at that I'll show you what I mean the big old chunks that are going to want to come out so clean that up real good and, and do the same with this side. Make sure there's nothing um, in the way of allowing the threads to work and everything else, all right? So clean that up and get back to me. All right, guys. So if you did everything right, that should be like really snug. Um, you know, kind of difficult to push in and out if you did that right after you're done cleaning it up. Hopefully you don't clean too much and allow it to to get too loose. Um, so, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure up the threads. Alright. Um, you'll Take your ferro rod, you'll drop it down in there, all right? And from the top to the top, you'll want to mark that from the, the top of this, um, the outer side where you screw it, the larger side. Sorry, maybe you can see it better now, the, the larger part here. All right, you'll screw it on or just line it up like this all right and then you'll take the top and you'll make a mark so if we were doing it we'll butt up against it and we'll make some sort of a mark with a blade with your your pen whatever all right because we're actually going to cut it um I'll, I'll show you here in a second. I gotta measure mine up. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna stand corrected real quick. Um, go ahead and just see this, this little line here, the little lip line, whatever, right there. Um, or the width underneath the fat lip, the part that my finger is carrying, covering. Either which way you want to look at it. Just split the difference between the two, all right, and cut it in half, all right? All right, guys, now once you get that done, we'll take that high heat JB Weld putty that I was talking about. So, yeah, you get it cut off, all cleaned up, so it looks, you know, nice. Unlike the other end, that looks, you know, ugly. <laughs> Sandpaper, X-Acto knife, Dremel, whatever you got. All right, so cut off about a half inch of this putty. All right, and if you never used it before, it's kind of cool. It's like an epoxy putty, so it, the center is one type of putty and the outer is another type of putty. So you, you just sit there and you squish it together until you get it completely mixed together and it's one solid color. The, the colors are different inside and out. And you're looking for a solid color. now. Like I said, the reason I use this stuff is this gives you up to a half an hour sometimes to be able to play with it, mold it, shape it, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, it just really comes in handy for these types of projects to be able to have that type of time length in order to play with things. 
case you mess up and don't like it. But then what we're going to do is just, you know, roll it out like a worm. Looks like I got a little piece of plastic in there. Get that out of there. All right. And you're going to want to get it down to about the same drill bit that you used to ream the uh, the ferro rod out. And I don't seem to see it right here off the top. I could have, well, there it is. So down to about the same as that, or just a, a little bit thicker than a, a thing of paracord. All right. And if you thin it out, no big deal. Squish it back together and, and start over. You know, just try to do your best. Stretch it out to be about three, three and a half inches, four inches long. I think I got about four inches here. And then on the non-threaded end that we didn't, didn't cut into, hopefully, but if we did, we didn't go very far. We're going to wrap the putty around it all right try to keep the same thickness all the way around that's what's great about it being able to last as long as you'll, you'll be able to shape it as you go all right and we're just looking for a really good clean rim here all right and we'll cut it off we'll pull it off whatever and then we're going to shape it get a little bit off onto the edges here just a, a, a smidgen all the way around doesn't have to be a whole lot but it's going to help hold it in place as you shape the rest of it all right just a little bit like that now I recommend having a little water on hand because the water allows you to shape easier by moving your fingers. It'll kind of make it a little milky and soft. Uh, ha 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 ha, sorry. And easy to work with. If you've ever worked with modeling clay, it's the same concept. All right. So we're just going to work it until we have some sort of a uniformed cert like our certs you know ring it looks like a little certs ring around it all right there's so many different ways we can try to accomplish that most easiest is by keeping it wet because <laughs> then it won't stick to your finger or whatever you're using in fact you know I, I use these little toothpick thingies sometimes all right guys I'm gonna finish this up and get back to you I'm, I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible all right guys when when it gets all done it's look something like that all right Oop, a little messy there no big deal we can it's just water wipe it off all right so it should look something like that it shouldn't be too thick um, not much more than a um, quarter inch to, to at the very most half inch because you want your hand to be able to to fit on that all right okay and uh, remember we're gonna have something up top here in fact that's what we're gonna go to next is once you get that all shaped and it's dried now mine's not dried and I'm not using this one I actually have another one all done up and, and ready to go um, in fact here to show you here it is all right as you see I, I took the time to spray paint it make it look halfway nice now i know it, it might sound kind of stupid to do that since we're going to cover most of it up with paracord but i don't know i'm just funny like that so if you don't want to spray paint it you don't have to you can leave it any which way you like all right so 
back to the the JB Weld again. This time we're going to take a pretty big chunk, guys. All right, not a super huge one, but we're going to get in there and we're going to take about an inch. All right. So, nice big fat chunk. Now you guys might not want to do yours at the same time. You might want to do one side and let the other side dry because like I said, it can last up to a half an hour where this is still pliable. All right, so I might actually mess up this end to do the other end, which is okay because um, I, you know, I'm not using that. I'm using that one. Uh, so... Get it all squished up real good. I know, so much fun, guys. My videos, they just won't stay short, will they? No matter how hard I try, I guess I'm going to have to someday invest in some editing stuff. <clears throat> really get them down. All right, so once you get that all done up, right, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to roll out a, a big snake, but this time we're going to leave it a little bit bigger. All right, and it's still got to be, you know, three inches. All right, and what we're going to do is just, just right up to that line where you you uh drilled it out at all right that's where we're gonna go to all right now taking something go ahead and push some of that in there into the crack or all the way in not just into the crack but in there so that there's something for the uh, rod to eventually rest on and um, make sure that you clean the inside out after you squish it through and everything else get everything cleaned up because you don't want this to dry with it on there all right so we're pushing up to it we got a little bit in there take a second shape it get back to you in a moment all right guys once you get it all shaped up like this go ahead and get it really good and wet and then take your oops your ferro rod with that through it and go ahead and push it down in there and make a shape all right now at this point come back and clean it up just a little bit by uh making sure that there's not really touching all right now take your time in doing this like i said i don't need to i've already done this all right take your time do that take the little excess off if there's any excess we want it clean all right come to the other side now i did not have this even when i squished it down in there make sure it's even um, you can even glue it to keep it straight but we're still just going to do what we got to do clean it up get it get it down out and around from over there all right guys give me a second I'll come back and show you what it should look like 
All right, guys, once you get it looking kind of like this, it's going to be uh, probably a little flat on one side, flat on the other side, and curved on the edges here. Um, uh, what you want to make sure you do is take your lid or your cap and get it really good and wet after you clean up the threads and everything real good. Screw it on and make that nice and flat as you possibly can and then screw it off. Make sure there's lots of water on the, the cap and on there before you do it. Um, and only go to where it starts to press. Don't go past it. Don't screw up all the work you did just to it to make sure you get it evenly flat so that when it sits in there and you screw it down, it screws on decently even um, you don't have to because um, ultimately it is going to stick up a little bit but you know whatever make it look nice make it not look nice how it, you know your your project um, all right so once that's done at this point we're going to set it to the side to completely dry once it's completely dry, spray paint it a couple of two, three times, um, you know, do a primer, not do a primer, doesn't really matter. Um, I always do a primer. Um, and then a couple of coats of whatever color you choose. So you get something that comes out looking like this at the end of the day. And you'll notice that, you know, there's a little bit of the JB Weld that's going down into the, the cracks and the crevices that it sits on top to give it a little bit of strength. Um, and you'll see that's how it, it looks when it's all said and done. All right, not the best spray paint job, but it's just because I like the little color. I don't like that 